So let's start with the very broad question. What do I need to know about open enrollment? Oh gosh, everything. Um, I would recommend that you go in and at least take a look at everything that is there. You can stay informed of all the information that is in there, such as um, accepting the non-tobacco use agreement. You have to do that every single year. There is your employee HSA contribution that changes every year, it goes back to zero. And then also your spending accounts, um, those always go back to zero as well. With uh, open enrollment, a lot of people will uh, get worried about uh, if they don't go in and uh, re-elect like the CDHP1, what will happen. But that does roll over. So if you're currently on the CDHP1 and you don't do anything, that will roll over uh, for next year. But our non-tobacco use agreement right. will default to um, I decline, and also the HSA contribution, your portion will default to zero. So those are a couple of things. And even though plans do roll over, I would encourage everybody to go into the open enrollment event because it's a great opportunity to review all of your contact information and make sure all the dependents that you want covered are covered and that you're not covering every, anybody that is ineligible for coverage. So um, it's just a great time to review your record and make sure everything is exactly the way you want it to be. So what dates and times is open enrollment open online? It is open from October 19th to November 9th at 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Correct. I've been told, this is my first one, that that's a change from the past. That is correct. It typically closes at noon, um, so you have a few more extra hours this to go around. But it's important to not wait to the last minute. Um, every year, Lots of people wait to the last minute, and the system does sometimes get slower because so many people are in the system. So we encourage you to go early, complete your open enrollment, print out a benefits summary, which it talks about what coverage you actually elected. So it's your documentation to support what changes you made. I think that election summary is very mm -hmm. important. Mm -hmm. Every year we have we do have individuals that call and say. I, I think this is wrong. I know I'm not sure if this was submitted correctly. Um, can you can you look this up? And do you have your election summary? And they say no. And I, that's your documentation. That's what that's what you need to, as proof of what you have the elections that you've made, what you've submitted. Um, so it's I just think it's so important. Just print it off and put it in a file folder. Or if you can't print, we we do get that that call frequently if you can't print it you don't have a printer at home save it as a PDF on your desktop and if you don't know how to go do that we can walk you through that too which plan should I choose <laughs> depends on your situation okay <laughs> so what are some options uh, well we have four plans we have the wellness uh, which you need to qualify for, and then we also have our CDHP1, the CDHP2, and then our traditional PPO plan as well. So the big difference is premiums, out-of-pocket expenses, your deductibles, and HSA. HSA. There we go. Yep. Right. If you've earned silver status and you've become eligible for the wellness plan in 2017, then you'll need to access your open enrollment event and actively select the wellness plan because if you don't you will continue in the same plan you had before or if you hadn't elected benefits before then you won't have them next year so action does need to be taken for that on the other side though if you did not qualify for the wellness plan and you previously were covered by the wellness plan you will automatically default to the cdhp1 plan and what does the cdhp1 plan mean it's the same exact plan design as the wellness plan. However, it has a higher um, premium associated with it. Also, you do not receive as high of HSA contribution from the state. We have a maximum exposure chart. That's right. right. That is done every year, and that is done with an HSA and without an HSA. So I highly, highly recommend that you know we, we take a look at that information, that chart. And I tell you what, that maximum exposure chart, every year we rely on that heavily to help people make decisions. We can't tell you what plan is going to be best for you. What we can do is help you walk through calculating your, your expenses that you think you may have or maybe known expenses. If you have prescriptions that you take on a monthly basis, then you need to factor that cost in to, to the plan that you're choosing. So. That maximum exposure chart shows uh, the, the most that you will pay out of pocket in a calendar year uh, 
and that it takes account that you're going to in-network providers and that you've accepted the non-tobacco use agreement. So there's a couple factor that, factors there that we can play with, but um, it, it should be the most that you're going to pay out of pocket in that calendar year. So. Wouldn't you guys agree that probably the wellness in the CDHP1 is the most popular? Absolutely. Uh, just because you have the lowest premiums and then you have the highest uh, deductibles and out-of-pocket maximums, but you also get the highest contributions uh, for your HSA from the state. So I think that's probably uh, that's correct. what the majority of employees go with, but again, it's up to you and your circumstance. And some people choose the traditional thinking that it had its best plan for them, not thinking about how much you actually spend in premiums. So when you look at that maximum exposure chart, the um, PPO plan is the one that you spend the most at, no matter what kind of option, unless you um, only have that plan for a couple months and like retire and don't decide to pick up early retiree insurance or COBRA, because you just pay so much in premiums um, for that plan. And Kelly, how can I change my HSA contribution? Uh, you would just, uh, at any time, if you want to change it during open enrollment, you would do it then. Uh, any other time that you want to change it, you would just call the benefits hotline and ask us. You do not need a qualifying event to change that contribution. You can increase it or de decrease it as many times as you'd like throughout the year. The IRS sets a maximum. Okay. And so the big thing is, is that when we are talking about open enrollment, we actually have how much you can contribute on the employee side for 2017, and that's the maximum that you can contribute for the year. So those are some key things to when you're taking a look at. You're putting in an annual amount, not the bi-weekly amount. Does the state match HSA contributions? The state actually does not. What it is is that if you're electing the HSA, you get the state's contribution, so you do not need to put in your own contribution to get the state's. The biggest thing is, is to make sure you've elected it. And on your first paycheck, you will receive a lump sum, and then also from then on, a bi-weekly contribution from the state. Okay, so they, they do continue to put money, but it's set amount. It's not yes, based yes. on how much you Correct. put in. Nope. It's based on the plan that you've elected, mm -hmm. okay. uh, on the medical plan that you've elected. So we'll correspond with that. We have a rate chart out on the Invest in Your Health Indiana website <clears throat> that will list uh, not only what the premiums are for each plan, but also what the HSA contributions are, depending on the plan that you choose. And the coverage level you chose as well. So it's Single versus people. family, yes. that's correct. And those contributions are only for the wellness plan, the high deductibles, the consumer driven health plan one and two. Uh, you're not eligible if you elect the traditional PPO. What life insurance changes uh, should I make? or do I need to make during uh, open enrollment? Well, I would review your beneficiaries and make sure that the, your beneficiaries for basic and supplemental life, because again, that is coverage that you have on you as the employee. So um, in the unfortunate circumstance that you were to pass away, then uh, those beneficiaries would get those proceeds. So you really need to review those and make sure that those are up to date and those are the people that you would like those to go to. Um, the other consideration is dependent life insurance. So that's uh, insurance coverage that you have on your dependents. There's spouse uh, child coverage and then spouse child coverage. So um, it depends on the coverage level that you'd like, uh, but <clears throat> it's really important to consider that in, in, as an as a option should something and in your open enrollment event, um, you can only make certain changes. So you can drop or reduce your coverage for supplemental and basic life and even dependent life, but you cannot increase your supplemental or collect it for the first time with supplemental or basic life. The only thing that you can add during open enrollment, if you already have basic life, you can add child only dependent life insurance. And just one final reminder, open enrollment is October 19th through November 9th at 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Eastern Standard Time at uh, 4 o'clock on the 9th. PM. Yes. And, and don't Thank worry, you. with all these hints we gave you, you're going to be just fine. Oh, well, thanks. <laughs>